All right, my friends, there seems to be another major cyber threat emerging here. And uh, I got a couple of articles I want to share with you guys. And they're talking about how uh, this nightmare malware cyber weapon is called Crash Override and In Destroyer. There's two separate ones and uh, how they threaten national power grids and they're claiming that they're already causing blackouts and have caused blackouts and so I wanted to uh, report on this as a more signs of the times here in this first piece that uh, was published by USA Today yesterday uh, it talked about as you see here that a new malware was discovered that could threaten electrical grids and it went on to say that a new malware variant capable of knocking out networks that run power grids around the globe has been discovered by a computer security company studying an attack on the Ukrainian power grid and interestingly enough I mean you look at what's going on in Ukraine right now I mean I talked a lot about that in previous videos uh, but it goes on to mention how the malicious code is capable of actually directly controlling electricity substation switches and circuit breakers and could potentially be used to turn off power distribution or to physically damage equipment used in the electricity distribution grid according to researchers at ESET uh, wrote in a paper posted earlier uh, yesterday and it mentions how U.S. power providers are properly alarmed, especially at the sophistication of the program, according to Sue Kelly, who's president and CEO of the American Public Power Association. And uh, she went on to quote that, uh, uh, she said, we are going up a level in the video game here, she said. The organization and the power companies it serves are working with national and international organizations and the U.S. government to analyze the malware and the threat it might pose. Automatic malware that attacks the uh, electrical grid is a big deal, said Mark Weatherford, a chief cybersecurity strategist at the security firm uh, Varmor, and the danger of the malware, it goes on to say, is that it can automatically trip the breakers within a power system that keep the electrical lines from being overloaded and if one breaker is tripped the load is shipped to another portion of the power grid and if enough are tripped uh, in the right places it's possible to create a cascading effect that will eventually overload the entire system Weatherford went on, uh, goes on to talk about and uh, you know, he was formerly the chief security officer at the North American Electric Reliability Corporation, the regulatory authority for North American utilities. And he went on to say that in some cases, it could then take days to restart all the plants. And I mean, when you're talking about national uh, uh, electrical grids, I mean, you're talking about uh, nuclear, uh, you're talking about everything, right? A uh, complete blackout situation. You know, more signs of the times here, folks. The, 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 the distress of nations with perplexity, just as the scriptures foretell. And it goes on to say uh, here that two things stand out about the malware dubbed uh, in destroyer by the researchers. It's an order of a magnitude easier to use than previous programs, and it wasn't uh, actually deployed to do any real damage, meaning whoever's behind the December attack uh, might simply have been testing the waters so that the, the December attack they're referring to is the one that occurred there in Ukraine. And uh, they're saying that that might have just uh, been somewhat of a beta test of larger things to come, perhaps. And... Uh, it goes on to uh, talk about how industrial control networks of the type used in power systems use communications protocols that are much less secure than the kinds of computer networks uh, used by banks, retailers, and businesses. And uh, 
in a quote here from uh, Robert uh, Lepofsky, a senior malware researcher with ESA. Uh, he said they were developed years ago without security in mind. They weren't designed for smart grids or uh, interconnectedness. And, uh, of course, the United States has been concerned about possible cyber attacks on the power system or other types of attacks even, uh, but specifically cyber attacks for years now. And uh, President Trump's cybersecurity executive order signed back in May specifically asks for a report uh, on the dangers to the electrical grid, for example. And uh, so basically it's, ba it's basically the switch of a button here, folks, is what we're talking about. Minimal human control, taking out national power grids. And it goes on to talk about in this first piece here how uh, the end destroyer's ease of use is so disturbing because industrial systems are still playing security catch-up in this regard, according to Raheem Beya at the Georgia Institute of Technology there in Atlanta. And he went on to say, I knew we were going to, uh, things were going in this direction, but I didn't think it would be this soon. And uh, he teaches a course in infrastructure hacking and protection for graduate computer science students. And he says that the software needed to take down an electrical grid no longer requires the resources of a nation to create. And it goes on to mention adding a module to the malware is now something that a strong computer science graduate Basically, uh, you know, your, your, your average, you know, uh, top of the class computer science graduate, a student could do it, he goes on to say. And it says that there's no evidence that the malware has been deployed in the United States as of yet, but the highly sophisticated way it was written means it would be very simple to use here, according to the experts. And... Um, of course, uh, when you're talking about the U.S., you're also talking about, you know, Canada as well. And it mentions that worldwide there are close to 50 power control system protocols, but in Destroyer's modular system makes it easy to build a module aimed at a specific one and add it to the framework. Uh, for example, the malware contained a, uh, a module to attack. Uh, and the substation automation program used in Ukraine and common in many European uh, electrical systems um, and they give the the actual number of the code there uh, what was attacked uh, and in the United States the DNP3 program is more commonly used it goes on to mention given the modular nature of the malware it would, it would be extremely easy to add a module that targeted the U.S. protocol, said Galina Antova, co-founder of the Clorati, a company that provides industrial control security. And she, and she went on to say it's basically plug and play. It's like I mentioned, it's, you're talking about the flip of a switch, click of a button. The code, it goes on to say, is extremely alarming because it could too easily be deployed against U.S. electric transmission and distribution systems to devastating effects, according to Robert Lee, the CEO and founder of Dragos, an industrial control security company that also analyzed it. The creators of the malware aren't known, it goes on to mention, uh, though several working in cybersecurity have pointed a finger at uh, many uh, uh, culprits they deem, but you know, there's certainly no proof, of course. You know, there are, uh, people want to point the finger at Russia and, uh, you know, all the, some of these other hacker groups. But, uh, it, you know, a lot of that stems from what's going on there in Ukraine and the reason why they want to point the finger. And I don't believe uh, that that's the only uh, threat there. I'm sure many nations are engaging in potential cyber warfare, as we've already seen. And... Uh, you know, who's to say that it doesn't get into the, to the hands of someone who's, you know, not a world leader, but someone much more maniacal. Well, there probably isn't much more maniacal than the people who rule this world. Uh, however, that's a story for another day. Uh, but 
And basically, uh, this is the first piece I wanted to share with you guys. And it talks about, uh, as we see here, the switch of a button, basically. And they're talking about how, you know, the, the researchers um, who follow this field wonder if this Ukraine attack was merely a test or even a threat. And the attackers did nothing to hide their attack or what they were doing, it goes on to mention. And, and Tova went on to say that uh, it's starting to feel like the Ukraine attacks in 2015 and 2016 were a playground for someone running a proof of concept. It's like I said earlier, a beta test. And this is the other piece I'll link you guys up with also talking about this uh, attack, but it also goes, it talks about the uh, attacks there in Ukraine and Kiev, and it uh, mentions how technicians had responded to the uh, uh, Pivnichna substation and took the circuit uh, breakers off computer control, restoring power a little after 1 a.m., and it was only the second confirmed case of a computer attack triggering an electrical blackout, and compared to the first, uh, 12 months earlier, also in Ukraine, by the way, it was a fizzle, affecting far fewer customers and for a fraction of the time. And uh, in the six months since the Kiev attack, security researchers have, you know, wondered, as I just mentioned, uh, why the hackers even bothered with, bothered with such a uh, fleeting disruption and speculated that someone was using Ukraine as a testing ground for a much more serious attack. And now that dark assessment seems to be confirmed. And we've got researchers at two security companies uh, uh, yesterday that came out and announced that they finally found and analyzed the malware that triggered the Kiev blackout, and it's far worse than imagined. The computer code dubbed Crash Override by the San Antonio-based Dragos and In Destroyer by ESET in Slovakia is a genuine cyber weapon. Oh, uh, sorry, I actually, earlier in the video, I referred to them as two separate ones. I thought it was two separate codes. Uh, but I misspoke there. It's actually, they're both uh, two different names for the same cyber weapon. So I apologize for that. But it goes on to say uh, that uh, this uh, computer code dubbed Crash Override and In Destroyer uh, is a genuine cyber weapon that can map out a power station's control network and with minimal human guidance issue malicious commands directly to the critical equipment and it goes on to say in this piece here that uh, only once before has the world seen malware designed for such a, a, a type of sabotage. And that was with the 2010 Stuxnet virus used against Iran's nuclear program, according to the report here. And Crash Override, uh, or In Destroyer, is the first to target civilians. And the first such malware built to target a nation's power supply. And it's unclear, it goes on to mention in this piece as well, who created it. But uh, both uh, ESET out of Slovakia and uh, uh, Dragos in San Antonio say it was built from scratch, leaving uh, none of the usual fingerprints that allow analysts to link one hacking campaign to another. And Ukraine has faced a near uh, biblical plague of cyber attacks since entering into hostilities uh, with Russia three years ago. And uh, many have, uh, you know, of course, led unequivocally to Moscow because of this, uh, but not so with Crash Override. Uh, it says, the only thing that's certain, says security researcher Robert Lee, the CEO of Dragos, is that the malware wasn't built as a one-time weapon. It's designed from the ground up to be easily reconfigured for a variety of targets and contains some payloads that weren't even fired off there in the Kiev attack, and he said it's a nightmare, and that the malware in its current state would be usable for every power plant in Europe, for example, and this is a framework, he goes on to mention, designed to target other places. And this crash override, folks, marks a significant escalation in the electronic arms race at a time of uh, overt saber rattling from the U.S. adversaries, you know, like Russia and North Korea and to some extent even China, and increasingly loud warnings about the vulnerability of the power grid. 
And last January, the Department of Energy assessed that the U.S. now faces imminent danger of a cyber attack that would trigger a prolonged cascading outage that would undermine the U.S. lifeline networks, uh, critical defense infrastructure, and much of the economy. It could also endanger the health and safety of millions of citizens, it goes on to say in the uh, report here. Now, uh, Lee says that crash override is built to cause regional outages in its current form, um, and it doesn't uh, have the capability, at least currently, to start a cascade on the order of the 2003 northeastern U.S. blackout, and uh, I actually experienced that. Uh, but uh, it says, nor to be easily repurposed to target other uh, industrial control systems like water treatment plants or gas pipelines. And the amount of uh, expertise and resources that went into creating the program augurs even more dangerous malware to come, it goes on to say. Uh, what makes this thing a, a crazy moment is the understanding of grid operations encoded within it, Lee went on to say. And that's because the code targets a crucial technology uh, that's called uh, SCADA, or S-C-A-D-A, -A, for supervisory control and data acquisition. And a SCADA it network is uh, essentially a electronic nervous system, if you will, that allows operators to remotely monitor and control all the bumps, uh, or, or pumps, excuse me, uh, motors, relays, and valves that under grid society's infrastructure. And the technology, it goes on to say in the piece here, uh, grew out of the electronic industry beginning in the 1940s as a solution to the growing complexity of power distribution, which requires constant monitoring and adjustment of equipment at thousands of substations scattered around the country. Uh, rather than keep technicians at every site, utilities began connecting the substation equipment to meters and knobs at centralized control centers, first by wire, later by radio, and today over uh, serial ports and digital networks, with you know graphical computer controls replacing the meters and knobs. As uh, products of a more innocent time, the major SCADA protocols were never designed for security. And it goes on to say here, uh, in a quote, we use the term insecure by design, said veteran SCADA security guru Dale Peterson. It goes on to say you can switch relays on and off without any authentication. Everything an attacker would want is a documented feature of the device. It's like a, we talked about earlier, a switch on and off. In Crash Override... Uh, which, once uh, it is configured and deployed, actually operates invisibly and automatically at the lowest levels of a plant network. And when the proper module is activated, it runs under the name of the legitimate Windows process controlling equipment at the remote substation, and crash override uh, kills the uh, original program and it basically starts issuing its own commands over the SCADA link, cycling through a range of circuit breaker addresses and systematically tripping each of them, then starting again at the top. Even if the control center is able to send its own commands to restore the circuit, crash override will just hit the breaker again, running continuously in an infinite loop, it says in the piece. It's basically like a pop-up on a website where you close it and it just keeps opening again and Lee goes on to describe that this is basically what they're doing to the circuit breakers and um, other experts gentleman with the last name Peterson it goes on to say here uh, in a quote that he expects crash override to inspire copycat efforts particularly among nation state attackers and he said to see something that's been predicted for so long actually happen, more people will think that they should be doing it. And he said, if we haven't had enough of a wake-up call already, this is it. Time is running out, he goes on to warn. And so there you have it, folks. I'll link you up with these uh, couple reports here. But basically, these uh, nightmare, or this nightmare cyber weapon crash override or in destroyer 
uh, threatens national power grids and basically could be run by any, uh, you know, strong computer graduate student. And it requires minimal human um, effort or control and uh, basically operates invisibly waiting for commands at a specific time. Very serious uh, stuff here, folks, and certainly uh, major signs of the times. And again, they're saying that this uh, has already been responsible for blackouts, uh, specifically there uh, in Ukraine a couple times. And so I think I'll close with that. I went on a little longer than I had anticipated here. Uh, so until next time, guys, uh, this is Brother Joey signing off. I pray you're all blessed. And as always, much love, my friends was published by USA Today yesterday, uh, it talked about, as you see here, that a new malware was discovered that could threaten electrical grids, and it went on to say that a new malware variant capable of knocking out networks that run power grids around the globe has been discovered by a computer security company studying an attack on the Ukrainian power grid. And interestingly enough, I mean, you look at what's going on in Ukraine right now. I mean, I talked a lot about that in previous videos. Uh, but it goes on to mention how the malicious code is capable of actually directly controlling electricity substation switches and circuit breakers and original organizations and the U.S. government to analyze the malware and the threat it might pose. Automatic malware that attacks the uh, electrical grid is a big deal, said Mark Weatherford, a chief cybersecurity strategist at the security firm uh, Varmore. And the danger of the malware, it goes on to say, is that it can automatically trip the breakers within a power system that keep the electrical lines from being overloaded. And if one breaker is tripped, the load is shipped to another portion of the power grid and if enough are tripped uh, in the right places it's possible to create a cascading effect that will eventually all right my friends there seems to be another major cyber threat emerging here and uh, I got a couple of articles I want to share with you guys and they're talking about how uh, this nightmare malware cyber weapon it's called Crash Override and In Destroyer. There's two separate ones and uh, how they threaten national power grids and they're claiming that they're already causing blackouts and have caused blackouts. And so I wanted to uh, report on this as a, more signs of the times here in this first piece that uh, potentially be used to turn off power distribution or to physically damage equipment used in the electricity distribution grid, according to researchers at ESET, uh, wrote in a paper posted earlier uh, yesterday. And it mentions how U.S. power providers are properly alarmed, especially at the sophistication of the program, according to Sue Kelly, who's president and CEO of the American Public Power Association. And uh, she went on to quote that, uh, uh, she said, we are going up a level in the video game here, she said. The organization and the power companies it serves are working with national and international overload the entire system. Weatherford went on, uh, goes on to talk about, and, uh, you know, he was formerly the chief security officer at the North American Electric Reliability Corporation, the regulatory authority for North American utilities. And he went on to say that in some cases, it could then take days to restart all the plants. And I mean, when you're talking about national uh, uh, electrical grids, I mean, you're talking about uh, nuclear, uh, you're talking about everything, right? A uh, complete blackout situation. You know, more signs of the times here, folks. The, the, the distress of nations with perplexity, just as 